Today I'll talk about mages in Burning Crusade. I'll cover macros I use, and these you can also find below the video, the mage spells and how and when I usually use them, talents, rotations and the hit cap you need for each spec. Frost mages can learn water elemental at the bottom of the frost tree, and this macro will simply let me summon the pet and actually make a target and even attack the target that I currently have. This spammer bolt macro will let me cast frost bolt and my pet will cast water bolt at the same target. Water elementals also have the ability called freeze. This spell works like the mage frost mover, but you can cast it anywhere within 35 yards of the water elemental. The macro will simply let me cast freeze when it's off cooldown. And this way I can actually keybind it and use it really fast. And in PvP and even PvE this will be really handy. You might have noticed that when you cast blizzard then you have to target the area and then left click. With this macro you simply just have to drag the mouse to the location and press the macro. All mages will have ice block in Burning Crusade. This macro will let me cancel the ice block the moment I hit the macro. This will be really useful in PvP, but also PvE if you get CC'd by monsters and you want to break the CC and get back to casting. I often notice that people actually have water but also food at the action bar. If you use this macro then you will simply eat and drink at the same time by pressing one button. Make sure to replace the name of the item that you eat and drink or the macro won't work. This macro will let me set a focus target, and focus target is actually a new feature in Burning Crusade. What this means is that you can have a main and a focus target. That way you can target something but also be able to cast a spell on the focus target at the same time. So if you have the focus target, then you can also have a macro that will let you cast at the focus target. So for example here I can sheep the focus target even though I have another main target. So here this macro will let me focus counter spell. So as you can see my focus target is the other dummy and here it gets counter spelled. Right here I have a main target and the priest is getting counter spelled. This is not a mage specific macro but for everyone. It will let you hide the griffins at the action bar and that way make your UI look more clean. There's also add-ons for these kind of things. Mouse over is another way to cast a spell on a secondary target. So instead of having to set a focus target, then you simply hover over the target that you want to cast a spell at without losing your main target. The first example was with counter spell, and this one will simply let me mouse over and sheep. You can also decurse your friendly targets with this macro. So mouse over the targets and decurse. If you don't have a mouse over target, then you will actually just decurse yourself and that's why this macro is really useful. We still have the different spell ranks in Burning Crusade. And it's sometimes useful to cast a rank 1 spell to make sure you don't spend a lot of mana when not needed. This fire blast mouse over macro will let me destroy totems or break CC without spending a lot of mana. Do you always have different ranks of conjure mana gems on your action bar? This macro will let you make all of them by spamming one button. It will always cast the most powerful gem first and you can remove the conjure mana emerald to make it work in classic as well. You can also remove all the spell ranks that you don't have and that way make it work at low level. As we make all these gems then you probably also want to use them, and this macro will let you use the most powerful first. This one will make your pet stop casting and instead follow you. It will also make yourself interrupt the spell cast, so you don't have to move to actually interrupt the cast. This way you don't forget to actually make your pet stop casting if you're not supposed to hit the current target. You can also make your pet stay at a position, but why is this macro useful? Well, for example, in PvP it will matter a lot. 
So those who can actually control the pet instead of just having it following you all the time will have a huge benefit. Here's an example. So I get zapped and if my pet was actually next to me, the rogue could instantly kill it. By placing the pet away from me, I might have a chance to actually sheep the rogue when he finally kills my pet. And this way I also avoid other CC because he's not next to me. If you ever try to spam wand, you'll probably notice it won't go off. But with this macro you can spam it and it will continue to go off even if you actually spam the macro. This new mage ability called spell steal will let you steal buffs from players or creatures. I use a macro for this spell when I pvp. Paladins have blessing of sacrifice and they can use this to break out of CC. So if I sheep the paladin and his teammate actually has this buff and receives damage, then the paladin sheep is removed. So by spell stealing this buff from his teammate, then I make sure the paladin don't break out of CC if I damage his teammate. But I also need to remove the buff from myself or the paladin will break out of CC if I take damage. The next topic is the mage build. The first build I'm going to cover is invisibility. Using this ability will give you a 5 seconds window where you're not supposed to be attacked. You will turn invisible after those 5 seconds. Invisibility will break if you run into any kind of AoE, flare, demolition shout, if you start casting or eating. I often use this spell in dungeons, so we are fighting something, I'm in combat and low on mana. I turn invisible and now I can actually start to drink. The ritual of refreshment is another new spell. You'll need a party group of at least 3 people to make this work. This will let you summon a table with biscuits. You can pick up 80 of these and this will grant you mana and health. A new mage armor is introduced. Molten armor will grant you 3% crit, 5% less chance to be critical hit and cause fire damage to attackers. Arcane Blast does a lot of damage, but casting this will also grant you a debuff. This will reduce the cast time, which is of course great, but also increase the mana cost. The debuff stack up to 3 times. Alliance can teleport and portal to Exodar, Jadred City and Faramore. Port will have Shattered City, Silvermoon City and Stoneheart. Icy Veins is a new spell in the Frost Tree. It will be a talent that you will aim for almost no matter what spec you actually plan to play. It will make your cast 20% faster and damage won't push back your spell cast while you have this buff. Do notice that it doesn't make you immune to kicks, earth shocks, silence and stuff like that. Icelands is an instant cast that is great for pulling monsters or making huge shatter crits. In classic we used to do a frost nova, frost bolt and then cone of cold for the shatter crit. But in TBC we can be really far away and still do a huge shatter crit with frost bolt and Icelands. Next up is a few PvP and mana efficient tricks. Here I use rank 1 Cone of Cold. This apply a slow without using too much mana. It's also really great if you're kiting monsters. Rank 1 Frostbolt is also a good way to apply a slow. I never use higher than rank 1 Frost Nova because the other ranks don't extend the time people are actually being novat. So this way I save a lot of mana in the end. Improved Blizzard will slow for the same amount and duration no matter what rank. So if people kite around pillars, then I just use rank 1 to keep them slowed and in combat. Polymorphing in PvP is really important, but using the highest rank doesn't increase the amount of time people are being CC'd. Some classes can dispel your buffs, and here you see a shaman purging me but you can cover the important buffs for a longer time by spamming rank 1. So this way you might get out of sight and actually manage to keep the important buffs. Warriors will have spell reflection in TBC and this is a huge counter against casters. The 
best way to counter this as a mage is to try and bait the warrior to use spell reflection. The way I often bait is to pretend I will actually finish the cast of the frostbolt or sheep. We baited the spell reflect and next we have to cast one instant spell to remove the buff. Now we can sheep. First I will cover the pvp and then the pve talent trees. The first spec here is what we refer to pump pyro. This spec is really good early on when people have next to no resilience. I prefer to play this spec with a rogue or another mage. The downside of this spec is the mobility and survivability. This is a more deep fire spec, so we get the bottom of the tree, dragon breath, so this way we can easily control the fight. We also have counter spell in arcane tree, so this spec, more survivability and more control, but way less burst. The frost tree is for sure the one I prefer. This way we get double ice block, we get ice barrier, and we even get two pets, so this way we can control the fight way better. And at the same time, we also get improved counter spell from the arcane tree. When it comes to spell hit in PvP, then I always aim for 5%. Spell penetration wise, it can be difficult to get items, but I often aim for 60. This is one of the fire PvE talent trees that I use. Early on, if I struggle with mana, having that clear casting in the arcane tree will definitely help me. And in the frost tree, go for elemental precision for more hit chance. Once I don't have problems with my mana, then I go more into frost and get icy beans. That way I can actually cast faster and do more DPS. So this is my rotation. I always start with 5 scorches. That way I get vulnerability on the target. Next I start casting my fireballs and what I can do here is actually to use combustion, my trinket and icy beans. Now I can start to blast a lot of damage, but it's important to remember that you need to maintain the vulnerability debuff. You'll need to get 164 hit, it's probably pretty difficult to hit that amount, but gems and enchants might help you a lot. I always play frost early on in Burning Crusade. The spec does decent damage, but it also adds a lot of control. This become really handy when you dungeon farm for your pre-rate biz gear. That's why I'm also specced into blizzard, so if I play in a dungeon spell cleave team, then my tank can easily kite because I have the slow and the other casters can easily dps. Single target wise they're also pretty decent. So you spam frostbolt, you use icy veins and pet, and when you use icy veins and your pet, then use cold snap at the same time. That way cold snap will also be ready a lot faster. Spell hit wise, it's the same as fire. Aim for 164. Last but not least, we have the arcane tree. Playing this spec requires a lot of mana. You should also consider being in a group with a shadow priest, get innovates and mana spring totem. I always go arcane when I have the 2 set bonus from tier 5. The set bonus will increase the damage of arcane blast and reduce the mana cost. And this is the main ability you use as arcane. The rotation for arcane is not always the same. It all depends on your mana pool and the amount of innovates. If you have a decent mana pool all the time, then you can spam arcane blast and keep bursting. But if you start to struggle mana wise, then you should use frostbolt. That way we also get rid of that arcane blast debuff. Once you have decent mana, then you can use arcane blast together with icy veins and start pumping again. When it comes to hit, then you should aim for 5%. Alright, this is it for me today. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.